Hello, and welcome to another pant-wettingly exciting mini-series in Andy Mancam's garage in which we're going to be fitting front brake pads, rear brake pads, and new brake fluid to this Kawasaki Versus 650. In this mouth-watering instalment, we're going to be fitting the front brake pads. If you'd like to see me fitting the rear brake pads or replacing the brake fluid, click on the links on screen to watch those videos now. Front brake pads. Most of us have got them. Eventually they wear out, so sooner or later you're going to have to change them. It's about time for mine to get changed, so let's get the calipers off, get the pads out. It's a 12mm socket on the caliper bolts. But also, to avoid any damage, I'm going to undo this little plate, which holds on the ABS sensor as well. I don't want to be breaking that mere days before I'm supposed to be heading out to the Alps. Waited a long time for this trip. Bolts out, and then we can just slide the caliper off the back of the discs. Have a look inside, see what we're looking at. They've actually got a fair bit of meat left on those pads, but I'm going to be breaking a lot more than usual in the mountains. So I want to head out with a brand new set of pads so I know for a fact that they're not going to be running out midway through the tour. So to get these out, we need to remove this pin here, which is being held in by this little circlip pin thing. So I'm just going to use this screwdriver just to pull it out and ping it into my lap. There it is. Just a little spring clip. I think that's safely in my little tray of magnetism. So then, pliers, work this pin out. Again, just throw it on the floor because those are the rules. So now we can lever this one up, slide it off the pin like that and that's free. And then the other one is just held in with goodwill and happy thoughts, but that comes out too. And then we can see our pistons in there. That's the bit that pushes on the pads, which pushes the pads against the brakes. Now, because these pads are quite worn, the pistons, as you can see, are sticking out a fair bit, so there's not going to be enough room to get the new pads in there, which are going to be thicker, and then get them back on the disc. So we need to push these pistons back into the body of the calipers. I'm just going to do this with this Allen key on the edge of the jaws there and use it to push that piston back in. So there's one. Don't go too far because as you're pushing this back in it's going to be forcing brake fluid back up the brake lines and up to your reservoir so you don't want to be pushing fluid out of the top. And if you've topped it up recently there's obviously going to be more danger of this spilling some out the top because you've put extra in as the system has pushed it through. Okay, same again for this one. should do it. So now we're ready to stick the new pads in. Now the pads for the Versus, I'm not sure about other bikes, but the pads for the Versus come in a left and a right set, so make sure you've got both of them, because if you come to do this and find you've got two lefts, you're going to be a little bit miffed. So just make sure you've got both sets. So this is quite clearly that one. Just get these beasties out. These are TRW pads that I've gone for here. They're an MCB682 and for the other side an MCB681. Now these are organic brake pads. I know that a lot of people are using sintered brake pads lately but the last time I had them on the Phaser they felt really grabby and snatchy and rough to me and they also wore out the discs a lot quicker. I mean, if you're happy with that, you want really snappy brakes, then sintered pads are probably the way to go. But I would rather change these more often and get a bit more feel and a bit more of a, an analog kind of characteristic to my braking rather than on or off. Now to stop the brakes making a horrendous noise when I'm braking, I've got some Jet Lube Copper Coat. Copper Anti-Seize Lubricant. Now all you need to do is paste some of this on the backs of the pads where they touch the parts of the caliper that they touch, and hopefully that should stop any squeaking and squawking and other squirr sounds that the brakes might make. So on this one, as we can see, it's only going to touch it in that ring around where the piston is. It's not a flat piston like they are on the back brakes. Put a liberal splodging of that all over it. I read somewhere recently that it's quite good to, to dab the grease on to make it stand up like this, because then you get a thick and textured coat, which apparently creates some kind of insulating cushion between the pad and the piston. And obviously it goes without saying, you don't want to be getting any of this shizzle on the front, because that needs to be grippy, and this stuff is slippy. Ah, oh, that rhymes. Mm. I think that'll do it. That's obviously too much because it's just a ring, but I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. So, just slide the pad in there. Slips into place. 
Being careful not to touch the surface of the brake pad now because I've possibly got grease on my fingers. So that's that one in. Now with the inside one, which is holding on to some of its plastic. Come on, let go. Come on. It only actually contacts here, here and here and the rest of the pad is actually left open so we just need to put the copper grease in these points. You can actually get sticky pads which can go on the back of the brake pads which apparently are supposed to be more effective than just copper grease. They cost a lot more, they're about five or six euros for a set I think. And I did read lots of reviews saying that they affected the feel of the brakes because they essentially make an actual physical cushion between the pads and the pistons. But I'm going to go with the old traditional tried and tested much loved copper grease option and if that does still make some noise maybe I'll go and get some pads and quickly slip them in before the trip starts. So with that greased we come to the caliper. So slide it onto the pin, rotate the pad round, seat it onto the caliper itself and then we're ready to stick the pin back in. So take our pin, shove it through the caliper, shove it through the first pad, shove it through the second pad and then through the end of the caliper. And then as you can see that exposes the hole in there for this little spring clip to pop back into. So we just put that into place. Now the caliper does actually have a little shoulder here so you just need to find the smallest spanner in the world just to rotate that pin so that you can actually get the clip into it and it's got somewhere to go out the back. That's that clipped. So there we go. That's the pads replaced. Now we just need to slip the caliper back onto the disc, making sure that the pads are either side of the disc properly. And then it's simply a case of bolt it back together. And then using your torque wrench, tighten them up to the right torque, which is 34 Newton meters. 30, 34. Then we just need to slot the ABS sensor back in, tighten up the bolt, and we're good to go. So now, as we probably can't see, we just need to give a couple of little squeezes on the brake lever, the pads tighten up, and hopefully that works lovely. So there we go, that's the brake pads changed. In the interest of keeping this video short and exciting, I'm just gonna tell you that the other side is exactly the same, just the other way around. So do the same as that, but apply it to this one. So thanks very much for watching, that's your front brake pads changed. If your brake servicing itch is not yet scratched, check out the video on changing the rear brake pads, or if you're feeling really saucy, check out the one where I changed the brake fluid. But till next time, thanks for watching. See you later.